Hi everybody, Jacob here. Welcome back to the Fragrant Bunker. This has been a quite requested video in the past years. I never came to it, but now we're gonna do it, finally. Listen, we're gonna do the top 10 Chanel perfumes for autumn, fall, autumn. Very fascinating uh, because, you know, it's good that I waited this long to do this video because, you know, Chanel keeps releasing new perfumes. Thankfully, they don't release as many new ones as other brands do, which kind of cheapens everything. Chanel keeps it classy, you know, just one, two perfumes a year, sometimes three, and that's it. But we have a nice assortment of Chanel fragrances now from which we can choose. And people have been asking me a lot in the DMs, um, in the comments, like, Deco, which Chanel perfume would you recommend for autumn or for spring or for winter? You know, but since we're in autumn now, as I'm filming, let's touch base on that. Let's see together which are the best 10 Chanel fragrances for autumn. Now, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already here on the tubes. You can also join me on Patreon, Super Deco Ball spelled together for extra perks. Lately, I've been doing a lot of exclusive videos dedicated to perfumes on Patreon, as well as on my membership channel on my main YouTube channel. So be sure to check that out if you want to know even more about the history of fragrances. And <clears throat> thank you to all my members and patrons who have already pledged. This video is being filmed live in front of a live virtual audience over on my main YouTube channel, Super Decop. So go check me out there as well and subscribe. I live stream every Saturday from that channel. So I film all of these videos that you watch here on my main channel and you can join the chats. Everybody's invited to join the chats. So I want to say hi to my co-chatters. Let's see in the chats if you can guess which are the 10, the top 10 perfumes. And while we're doing this guessing game here now, you can also later when you're watching this video, try to guess in the comment section down below before I get to say the perfume. So the first one on my list for autumn is Kind of this one is easy to guess because it's it's really good in autumn. Really good. Beginning of autumn and fading into kind of late autumn. It's 31 Rue Cambon. Now, I own the Eau de Toilette first iteration of 31 Rue Cambon, which in 2016 was discontinued in favor of the Eau de Parfum. But I love my Eau de Toilette. The Eau de Parfum is okay too, but if you can get your hands on the EDT... Get the EDT. Oh. This to me, it represents haute couture, but it also represents the best Chanel tweeds, complicated embroideries, layering of cashmere and other wools and silks and more tweeds. This thing is a gorgeous, gorgeous tweed jacket for autumn. It's amazing. With pink, red hues and a bit of brown, this one is the first one. Beautiful for autumn. It, just, it makes you feel cozy, but also fresh at the same time. You know what I mean? It's not winter. Winter, we would need to go into more sweet and gourmand, keeping you cozy throughout. This one, no, because not every autumn day is cold. Some autumn days are warmer. So you also want to feel a little fresh. You don't always want to feel overly hot. Perfection in autumn. So that was my number one, right? Now let's let's step into number two. Number two has to be, <laughs> it has to be. Uh, Chanel number five, the pure perfume. I have the Parfum. I love to use it as a spray. So this is a 7.5 mil rechargeable spray. I only got a couple of droplets left. Oh my gosh, again, I'm going to have to change. I, I go through these like nothing. So, oh my God, it's so divine. Beautiful in autumn. Now, if you don't want to drop a pretty penny for the pure perfume, you can also go for the, which I also like to carry around, the Eau de Parfum. So these are the two concentrations that I would recommend for autumn. The Pure Perfume, which is here, and the Eau de Parfum, which is here. Now, I have a really cute version of the Twist and Spray Eau de Parfum in a miniature form. Um, they, I don't know if they discontinued these, but you can still buy refills. So you pull this out. Oh, this one is also almost empty. I use up Chanel number no. 5 like nothing. <laughs> I use it up really quickly and I use a lot of it. So this is a really cute version, like a lipstick almost size for the 
It's even smaller than the other one. This one is seven milliliters and the pure perfume is 7.5 ml. So pure perfume and eau de parfum are my two concentrations for autumn of Chanel number no. five. Nicolas says they could bathe in number no. five. I do. Now, the third fragrance, beautiful in autumn, especially on those days where there's this crisp air outside, but it's not cold. Whenever the sun hits you, it's warm. It's that kind of like, they call it the Indian summer, which is probably politically incorrect to even use that term nowadays. But what it means or what it used to mean is a prolonged summer, a, um, an autumn that still has summer vibes within it, even throughout September and into late October. Now, for those particular days, this is the way to go. Uh, from the Les Zoo range, Paris-Venice or Paris-Venice. Beautiful fragrance for autumn. Highly recommend it. Mm. It's also cozy and voluptuous, but it's not overbearingly warm. So if the day does turn out to be warmer than expected, this is a, a warm embrace, but it doesn't overheat you. Perfection. Paris Venice is from the Le Zoo range, the one to get for autumn. Like, that's why I'm making this video also so that you, you know, so that you all finally get your answer because you've been asking me a lot. Like, which which one of the Les Exclusives should I get in autumn? Which one of the Les Zoos? This is the Les Zoos to get for autumn. Hands down. Hands down. Paris Venice. The next one, love of my life, and I always say this every year, and for those of you who follow me for since a long while already know, you know <laughs> that this one is going to be in my autumn list. I go through at least one and a half bottles every autumn of this perfume. And I just unboxed a brand new one last week. And I unboxed it on my channel and I just posted the video on my channel. It's the Pour Monsieur Eau de Toilette. Not the Eau de Parfum. Eau de Toilette. That's the one. With the real oak moss in it. Oh, to die for. I even... They've discontinued the 50 ml size, but I stocked up on this a few years ago. So whenever I travel, I take the 50 ml with me. So I kind of cherish these little tiny bottles because they don't exist anymore. So sad. But uh, yeah, I got a little 50 ml and 100 ml next to it. Ugh, divine. The bergamot, the Sicilian bergamot in here, the cardamom, the, the, the ginger, the oak mossy dry down, the hint of labdanum that they, they don't list in there, but I know it's there. <laughs> Maybe I just dreamed it up, but I feel like a good sheepra has to have a labdanum in there. And um, it's refreshing, but also warm, subtle, never overbearing. It's moody in, in, in weird ways. Like there are those days when I can smell it on me for like eight hours, and then there's and then there are those other days when I don't smell it after two hours and I have to reapply. So it's just moody in that respect. It goes through lasting longer and lasting shorter on my skin, but I don't care. Even if it lasts short on my skin, I just reapply. It, it's just a divine perfume. It's a mood booster. It's It makes me feel elegant, sophisticated, especially in that transitional phase, you know, between autumn and winter where you want something to give you a vigorous kind of strength when you to, to go through any weather circumstance. This is also great in the rain, by the way. Gorgeous, gorgeous. Now, number five is not Chanel number five. Number five is number 22. Now, mind you, um, I have chosen a number 22, the Eau de Parfum, but you can also go with the Pure Perfume for Autumn. So for autumn, it's EDP for me because it's slightly warmer than the EDT. The EDP has that more cocooning warmth about it. Um, especially in cold, crisp autumn days when the leaves are falling all around you, and, and but you have those ambery rays of light coming at you classic autumn which is my favorite light by the way i love when the sun hits that golden hue that's when that's when you wear uh, number 22 edp 
and the pure perfume. Next one, my number six on the list. Somebody, I think, in the chats guessed it before. Um, Sycamore. <laughs> now, listen, with Sycamore, um, of course, the Eau de Toilette, but it's no longer in production. But they've just released in September of this year the Pure Perfume. So if you can't get your hands on the EDT, uh, the ED the Parfum comes really close. I don't like the Eau de Parfum. Don't ask. Like, oh, what about the Eau de Parfum? I don't like it. it, it to me, it smells terrible. So the Eau de Parfum Sycamore is a big no-no. The Parfum is amazing. So masterfully blended. I am enjoying this one a lot. Uh, as well as the Eau de Toilette. I have stocked up back in 2016 slash 15 on several bottles. So I have my Eau de Toilette of Sycamore. Um, but truth be told, I'm using the Parfum more because the Eau de Toilette is very cold. It's a damp, cold perfume. This one has a bit more hint of warmth, but so elegantly blended in, woven in. So it, it's even more autumn -y. So the Parfum definitely is a winner. I'm so grateful that finally I can look forward to purchasing Sycamore again because I never bought the Eau de Parfum. I, I, I cannot stand it. It's that bad. Um, so for years, I haven't repurchased Sycamore since 2016. And now is the first year that they brought out a concentration of Sycamore within a formulation that I love. Uh, so I bought two bottles <laughs> stocked up on this one because you never know. They might discontinue it or they might reformulate it, but gorgeous, beautiful in autumn dreamy moody plus autumn is the time of year when i watch twin peaks and um underneath the sycamore trees is one of the famous songs from twin peaks so sycamore is very much connected to twin peaks and david lynch indirectly obviously but since they talk about sycamore trees in twin peaks and i love sycamore and autumn is the time to watch twin peaks and the time to wear sycamore it's all even more connected and even more deep love it number seven Interesting. I don't own this one in this concentration that I'm about to tell you, but it is amazing for autumn and I will be purchasing it next. It's one of those rare Chanel fragrances that I don't own just because I never really get to it because there's so many other Chanel perfumes that I like more. But this one is great in autumn and I do have an iteration of it, which I will recommend to you as well. And that would be Allure. Allure by Chanel, and I recommend Allure Eau de Toilette for autumn. Allure Eau de Toilette for autumn, not the Eau de Parfum. Allure Eau de Toilette for autumn. Now, I adore the Allure Hair Mist. I adore the Allure Hair Mist because it, and this is why I'm saying you could get this instead of the Eau de Toilette. One, because it's much cheaper than the Eau de Toilette, but it smells the closest to the Eau de Toilette. Uh, so you could get the hair mist and use it as an Eau de Toilette all over your body. It lasts a little bit less than um, the Eau de Toilette, but it's also gorgeous to spray it in your hair. Actually, you know what? I'm going to do it right now. Wow. Oh my gosh. Oh, it's, it's divine. I'm just, you know, moving my hair to, to get the, the smell in it. This is um, gorgeous. I'm telling you, you're not going to make a mistake by purchasing the hair mist and just using it in your hair, but it can also spray it on your skin. Um, it's going to make you feel buttery fresh. And that's what Allure, Allure manages to combine freshness with kind of like an ylang ylang quality of, of, of a buttery fragrance. So it makes you feel mmm in autumn. It gives, Allure gives the mmm to mmm autumn. <laughs> Just saying, gorgeous. Allure Eau de Toilette or save, save some coin and get the hair mist instead. It's divine. The hair mist is beautiful. You're not going to make a mistake with that one. Perfection as the leaves are falling. In the morning and early vibes, you spray this on and you go out and your hair smells the whole day because hair is the best uh, fragrance transmitter we have on our body. So it's going to maintain the smell for a long time, the hair. Uh, so now the next one, 
my number eight. We're getting close to the end line. Nobody guessed this one thus far in the uh, live chats that I'm kind of peeking into while I'm blabbering. Uh, now, this one was made for autumn. It was released in 2012, late August, mid-August 2020. So it was released in summer, but it was released as an autumn release. You know how they always kind of release it just, just before a season begins, because then they start promoting a fragrance, and then by the time they promoted it enough, the season in which the fragrance should be worn arrives. And that, my dear, would be Coco Noir. I still have one of the earliest bottles. Now, both iterations of it, Parfum and Eau de Parfum. Now, the Parfum has been discontinued, y'all. Tragic. They've discontinued the Parfum of Coco Noir, but they still produce the Eau de Parfum. Now, I have smelled a current version of it. It's kind of really bad, you guys. I don't know what they did to it. Maybe the tester bottle was off. It did not smell at all like the original Coco Noir. I, I have one of the first batches here. This thing is divine and um, it's a beautiful patchouli for autumn, early autumn. It's sophisticated. It's, el it's elegant. There's that golden baroque vibe about it. It's, it's such a beautifully tailored fragrance, and it's not given enough credit usually because it's kind of the smaller sister of Coco Mademoiselle, and Coco Mademoiselle is huge. You know, Coco Mademoiselle is literally sometimes it outsells number five. Sometimes it's right underneath number five, but it, you know, it's 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 Chanel's biggest perfume together with Chanel number five, Coco Mademoiselle. So Coco Noir is kind of like a flanker of Coco Mademoiselle. So it, it never really got the attention that it really deserved. And yes, Coco Mademoiselle is also a patchouli-based fragrance, and so is this one. After all, this is an iteration of Coco Mademoiselle. Even though they don't call it Coco Mademoiselle Noir, they call it Coco Noir. So you would think it's an iteration of Coco, but Mm, it's giving Coco Mademoiselle vibes, but a little bit darker. Now, the depth and quality of the first years or the first batches of this it, are insane. The current version that I've smelled a couple of days ago, I was shocked how terrible it smelled. But I repeat, might have been a sour batch or the, the tester bottle was standing in and the spotlight's too long. I don't know. But let me know in the comment sections and also in the chats is if anybody loves Coco Noir and has been purchasing it from 2012 when it was first released. And if you kept repurchasing it, like, did you notice a shift in the smell, in the formulation of it lately? Or have you not noticed a, a change? I'm only asking those people who have actually had first batches of Coco Noir and now the newest batches. If anybody knows, let me know. But um, yeah, and if you can get your hands on the pure perfume, I highly recommend it. But as I said, it's been discontinued. So, and I knew this one was going to get discontinued sooner or later. So when they released the pure perfume, what did your boy do? I bought two bottles. So I have a, my sealed bottle for my archives and I have one that I use. Maybe I should have gotten one more, but you can't have it all. I mean, what am I going to, you know, at a certain point, it's, it's, it's insane how many perfumes I would have. But mm. Tina says, uh, you have not noticed a shift in the smell. Letty says, Coco Noir is my current signature scent. Love of my life at the moment. Bought mine in 2019. And it's amazing. You bought yours before the pandemic, my dear. Things have changed a lot since 2019, and a lot of the perfumes now smell different. So test it out. Let me know in the comment section down below. If you got any batches, fresh batches from now, let me know. Let me know if it still smells the same uh, like, it, like it used to. Uh, so basically, let me tell you, this is a batch code 8401. So now we're almost at the eight batch codes. Like, so this is like nine, eight, nine years old. I have one of the first batches. 
and it's divine. The patchouli ripened, got deeper. Oh my God, it's insane. Gorgeous. Now, number nine. We're almost at the finish line here. Number nine for autumn is, this one is also kind of a no-brainer really because it's so, it cuts, it cuts through you like a knife in the best of ways. It can be warm, but also cold-blooded. It's a powerhouse from the 80s, my dear, dressed in black, just like Coco Noir is dressed in black. We got its male counterpart, although perfumes know no gender. I'll never stress enough to repeat this. However, we got Anteus, Buram by Chanel, the Eau de Toilette. This is my number nine. Oh, that gorgeous shoulder pad moment. Wearing Anteus in autumn is just magical. Really is. It's elegant, it's sharp, it's spicy, just to the just the right amount to keep you zesty, but also fresh throughout the day. Um, you can wear it with a gorgeous heavy wool coat, but you could also wear it with a light kind of bomber jacket or blazer, or even in de with denim. And you just rush out the house, you got to do some run some quick errands, but you can also wear it for business, a nice little sexy dinner. Beautiful in autumn. Oh my gosh, this thing. If you really think about it, I don't know why, but whenever I smell Anteos, it also associates, it gives me this vision of like falling leaves. They've just turned the right hue of brown or gold, and then they're kind of like falling. And as they're falling, the smell of falling leaves is Anteos in many ways, in autumn at least. But this is my number nine uh, of the top 10 for autumn. Now, what would be the number 10? Uh, Broxer says, I bought Coco Noir a month ago and sent it back to Chanel. It wasn't weak, but something was way off with it. It did not smell like my original bottle. Exactly. That's exactly the idea that I had as well. Like the feeling. It smelled. It wasn't it. It was something was wrong with it. Well, thank you for letting me know, Brockstar, so I'm not the only <laughs> crazy person here who loves their Chanel perfume so much that I notice every nuance. But um, I'm glad that, I, that that you've noticed it as well. Uh, yeah, something is off, for sure, for sure. Now, my number 10 is, again, two concentrations of the same perfume. Just like I showed you uh, number five, I said, for autumn... Parfum and Eau de Parfum. Here we go. We'll go, we'll go. It's Coco Mademoiselle, you guys. Coco Mademoiselle Intense. And Coco Mademoiselle Parfum. These are the two Coco Mademoiselles that I adore. Adore in winter. Like, adore. And uh, not winter. Autumn, 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 autumn. Take of autumn, autumn, not winter. Ugh. And these are the two concentrations, not others. These are the two for autumn. Coco Mademoiselle Intense, the Eau de Parfum Intense. And I even have a little miniature version of the Intense, just like I have the... Number five, Eau de Parfum, and a seven mil. They also did a seven mil of uh, Coco Mademoiselle Intense. Super cute. So I have that as well. And the Pure Perfume, which you can buy as a splash bottle, but they also have a spray. And the only spray they sell is 7.5 mil. Unfortunately, they don't offer refills for this, so you have to buy it new every time, even though you can take it out. But the Pure Perfume is so beautifully, masterfully blended. Um... It's just divine. You know what, girl? Yeah, I'm. I'm really today. I'm craving. I'm craving it like crazy. So let me let me just do a little two spritzes, just to kind of pep up the day. Oh yeah. Mm. It hits the spot. It. Mm. Oh, and then ooh, and then it mixes so nicely with the with the allure on the hair. They blend so beautifully together. So you could do allure on the hair. Hair mist, and then you do a little bit of Coco Mademoiselle, the pure perfume. Just a, just two spritzes is enough. 
it it blossoms so beautifully in slightly colder days. So, you know, on, on a very fresh autumn day is when you should wear uh, Coco Mademoiselle uh, Parfum because it, it's, it's very masterfully blended and crisp. And um, it combines very well with crystalline cold days. While for those slightly warmer autumn days is when I recommend uh, Intense. And I also recommend Coco Mademoiselle Intense for dates, you know, dinners out, evening, e evening type of scent. Also to go to bed. Really, really beautiful. You just got to be careful with the patchouli. If you're not a patch fan, this one is not for you. Because this is a very particular type of uh, what originally used to be called a sweet chuli. With the Intense version, it's less sweet than its counterparts, the Eau de Toilettes and Eau de Parfums. Um, but the Intense version is definitely a patchouli bomb. It can also smell fishy on some people. So you got to dose this one right. But with the, with the Pure Perfume, you can do no wrong. This thing is just magical. But more for colder days. And Coco Mademoiselle Intense is for the warmer days, but also for dinners, romantic outings. So that would be my list, my favorite 10 to wear in autumn. The, the Chanel perfumes. My favorite 10 Chanel perfumes that I wear the most in autumn. For sure, there are exceptions. For sure, from time to time, I'm not just going to stick to these 10, but these are the top 10. These are my top 10. You know, I'm going to veer off to others as well. You know, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to probably crave Jersey from time to time. You know, take a little sniff of Jersey. <laughs> then, you know, I'm, I'm probably also going to, you know, 19? No. It doesn't do it for me in autumn uh, at all. So I don't sniff on 19. But Jersey sometimes I will take Coromandel also. But, you know, but hey, we need some perfumes for winter as well. This is the selection of the top 10 autumn Chanel fragrances. Let me know what your top 10 is down below in the comment section down below. And also thank you guys so much for the live co-chatting. Trina says, wonderful list. Thank you so much, Trina. And, uh, um, the notes in Intense are different. Yes, Coco Mademoiselle Intense. The notes are different. It's not stronger per se, but the tone is different. It's darker. It's more intense, just like the name says, actually, right? And um, Coco Nora used to have such a strong purple fruit smell, says James. Uh, you mean Coco Noir? Interesting that you define this as purple. I define this as gold. It smells of like Byzantinian gold to me. It's, it's gorgeous. Such a pity that I didn't stock up more on this one. Because if it's true now, like Brockstar said that also their batch is like, eh, the new one that they had to send it back to Chanel, then I mean, you know, maybe something, they shifted something with these ingredients here. I'm going to have to look into it more. But hey, batch 8 four zero one is really good but it's almost like eight years old now so seven years old eight seven eight years old so just letting you know thank you guys so much for watching let me know your thoughts and your list down below and until next time never give up on love subscribe